In this video, let's learn how to create a drop down list in Excel. So here we have the employee leave form for our awesome chocolates company. We have already typed our ID number and employee name and I would now like to specify the leave type. We don't want our employees to type any leave type. We would like them to select from one of the four predefined leave types. These are sick leave, casual leave, annual leave and other leave. So this is where data validation can be extremely useful. We can select the cell where we want to give those four options and from the data ribbon, go to data validation, click on it. And from where it says any value, change it to list. Now here you can specify a source where your list is, or you can just type the list for now. We will just type it. So let's type sick casual annual other just use comma as separator and when you click ok excel will now have a small down arrow symbol right next to the cell this will only appear when you click on the cell and when you select that it will show all the four options in the order in which you typed them so i can pick the leave type from here and then i can complete my rest of the form and email it to the hr services place let us say you don't want to manually type the leave types in the data validation. You want to link them to a list of valid leave types. So you can set up such a list in anywhere else in the spreadsheet. It can be on the same sheet or it can be in a separate sheet. For purposes like employee leave form, it is advisable that you create a different worksheet and maintain that there. That way you can hide away this sheet so that it doesn't really interrupt the workflow. So let us set up the leave types here as a list. So now we are maintaining our leave types in this range B3 to B6 on the leave types worksheet. We can now go back to the leave page here, select the cell where the data validation is going to be set up, go to data, data validation, and from the settings where we just manually typed the leave types, select this entire thing, click on that little arrow, go to the leave types and point to this range B3 to B6. And when you click OK, nothing will change here. But now these four items are linked to this leave types. Let us say we have a policy change and no longer casual leave is called casual, but this is represented as CL. So we just type CL there. You come back here, you will now see CL as an option instead of casual. While data validation drop down option is a very good way to enhance your user experience in Excel, there is one limitation though. If somebody opens this file, there is no immediate indication that this is the cell where the data validation could appear. So one way to kind of enhance that user experience is whenever they select the cell, if we can show a small message that says you can pick an item that will improve the usability. To do that, select the cell, go to data validation, and from here, input message, just type a message that you want to have. So for example, I'm typing, choose one of the leave types. We will put that in the input message area, not in the title. And when you click OK, it will show this kind of a yellow box saying, choose one of the leave types. The best thing is it won't appear when you click away, but as soon as you click, you will see that. So this will have a little bit of more pleasant experience for your users. Now let's take our data validation drop down to the next level. This is good for a single level leave form, but I have here a multi leave form. The concept of this is very simple. This is the form that employee would use if they need to apply for multiple leaves in succession, probably three or four annual leaves chunked together. They would like to apply or a manager wants to apply for leaves for their employees. We'll just load it up with some data for now. So here I have filled some data for five of our employees applying for leaves on various dates for this many days. And now I just want to select the leave type for each of them in this cell. But those types will be linked to these four types that we have defined. This is how you can do it in a table. Just select the entire column. To do this, you will have to place your cursor on the header and when it turns into that black down arrow click, that will select that entire column. Now go to data, data validation, 
and from the settings just say list and the source would be your leave types and then click ok this will have same drop down available in any cell in the table and now i can say what these leaves are so this person is going on a cl they're going on other leave and again cl annual and annual the beauty of this type of a rule is if you were to add more rows to the table so if i go to the last cell and press tab i'm adding a new row so let's add one more one two three five as soon as you enter this cell the drop down appears here because we have kind of set the rule for the entire column of the table here is one best practice tip when you are setting up your data validation lists instead of setting up the data validation to a fixed cell address like b3 to b6 you want to set it up to a named range so what you could do is you can select this address b3 to b6 and then using the name box here give it a name so i'm going to call this as leave.types and press enter now we have given this range a name leave dot types from here i can now change my data validation data validation where it says b3 to b6 will simply say equal to leave dot types and click ok while there is no on screen change for the behavior for this set of data now it is a little more flexible so if you were to add some more leaves in future all you have to do is add that extra leave item here so we will add domestic leave to update my data validation i don't need to do anything i just have to remap my name to include this extra cell to do that we can go to formulas and from the name manager select the leave types notice that it is stopping at b6 so we just say it needs to go all the way up to b7 and tick now when you come here you will see the domestic leave up here there whereas for this form here it doesn't really show domestic because it is only linked up to b3 to b6 so this is why having a named range for this is a best practice because then you can easily update your linked data validation lists anywhere in the spreadsheet excel's data validation offers many other powerful possibilities if you are curious to learn some of those things check out my video that is shown on the screen that talks about how to avoid duplicate data entry it will introduce you to another way of using the drop down list combined with some additional techniques check it out